We, we want to really start to think by asking a few questions. What grabs my attention? Where do I stay focused? When am I the least overwhelmed or distractible? Um, we also want to ask, what brings me pleasure in my free time or when I'm working? Or what activities make me happy when I'm doing them? Because a lot for a lot of people, uh, there are things about your job that you like, and there are things about your job that you don't like. And obviously, we'd like to increase the things that you like. So what grabs your attention? What helps you stay focused? And what brings you pleasure, uh, and whether it's in terms of work or in terms of your, um, your free time? So many uh, older teens and adults with ADHD struggle with figuring out what profession to pursue. Uh, they might feel pressure to earn a certain amount of money or find a career that has a particular status. Um, but it's kind of a backwards approach if you go about it that way. Of course, you have to consider your salary and opportunities in a given field. But it's more useful at the beginning of this process if you can zoom out and really think about what you like to do. So given that many people with ADHD wrestle with staying focused and engaged in activities that don't interest them, redirecting on what captivates you before thinking about other aspects of a career will point you in the direction of real possibilities. So why don't we start by putting in the chat where, what helps you um, stay engaged? What do you like to do? And, and what activities that are related to um, a career help you feel happy enough when you're doing them? Because if we can find work that you mostly enjoy, even if you don't like a part of it, then you're in a winning situation because the most is, oh, is, is really where you're spending your time. So let, I don't see too many people putting answers in the chat, but if you can put some answers in the chat, that would be great. Um, so I've asked a couple questions. Now, maybe I'll ask a new question, which is, what is it that you found enjoyable or tolerable related to work in the past? What have you enjoyed doing? Susan, you're not getting any sound. Is anyone else not getting sound? Okay, people are getting sound. Cindy, I enjoy research, reading, learning, and communications that support vulnerable people. And are you working in a career where you're doing some of that with research, reading, and, and so, and so much, and, and that? Because if you enjoy doing these things and they become your profession, the chances are you'll get a lot more pleasure and enjoyment from the work that you're doing. Bob, you said, too much to say. I've been unemployed for four years. I'm sorry to hear that. After being let go by a dozen companies, my work has included product marketing, consult consulting, and technical sales. The best times are when I'm in the moment, speaking, teaching, etc., or when I'm jumping in to help someone. The worst are meeting deadlines, setting expectations, and communicating status on, pro on, on projects. So I'm curious, Bob, it sounds like you've been unemployed for four years. I'm wondering if you're looking for work in the same area or if you're looking for work in a different area. It seems to me that you would be great at being a trainer because you enjoy that and you're good at it, um, but you struggle with deadlines and expectations. Cindy, just cut off disability because I can't do it anymore. Um, what do you mean you can't do disability? You were cut off from disability or you cut disability off because you want to do something else? I'm not clear about that. So I'm curious, you know, before, you know, here we are, we're trying to sort of think about the types of work you might enjoy and, and what would get you, what kinds of things that those careers might look like. I'm wondering if you had three wishes for yourself related to your ideal profession or your ideal job, what would those be? If you could take a minute now and just close your eyes and think, what are three things that I really want my work to give me? What would those be? And put them in the chat so we can support you and share our ideas, okay? 
what are things that you would really like to see that are related to your prof- that would be related to your profession so for me i like connecting with people and teaching and and sharing interactions like this so this is something that i really love about my career um and what I don't really love is that I have like hundreds of emails that I have to deal with and I get overwhelmed and then I try to avoid them. And so that's a problem because I need to respond to them. So I'm curious if you could say something that you, you know, really, um, if you had some wishes for your profession, what would that be? And for me, the wishes for my profession would be that there'd be a magic person who would respond to my emails just the way I would respond to them. So I didn't have to do that. So. The final question that I like to ask when we're thinking about work is what are some negative messages that you tell yourself that might thwart you even before you begin to think about or work on some kind of profession? So what are some negative messages that interfere with those wishes that you have for yourself related to a profession? So Lara says, I like to help people feel good about themselves. Wonderful. Cindy uh, says, relating to people and teaching little kids. So let's um, see what else you're all thinking about. What are those things that you enjoy? If you had wishes for yourself related to the profession, what would those be? Um, Because when we want to identify what it is that we enjoy, we also want to identify what it is that we don't enjoy. Um, We don't all have the luxury of saying, I'm never going to do that. I don't have the luxury of saying, I'm not going to respond to um, to my um, to my emails, but at least I can try to talk with somebody about how to manage them. So I'm not doing it by myself. So let's see. Um, some of the negative messages that are that you, that I hear, Lara says, I'm not good enough. So that kind of cuts you off at the past before you even get started pursuing what might interest you. Bob says, support for mundane administrative tasks, work that is present, not removed, and a cause or great product I can fight for and believe in. Bob, these are all wonderful things to aim for in your career. Um, And I love that you're thinking about them um, in this way. That seems great. Um, Oops, my chair seems to be sinking. It's kind of embarrassing here. Uh, If you see me getting smaller and smaller, you'll know why. Um, Because this chair seems to have its own mind. Um, So Nicole asks, what if all work tasks seem boring to me? So there are a lot of work tasks that can be boring. um, And what we would have to do in in that situation is to sort of be able to prioritize which work tasks, um, you know, have an urgent element and need to be done. And those would go first. And then we'd want to kind of alternate between something that's boring and something that's a little less boring so that you can actually feel like you're making progress. Cindy says, my memory is so terrible that I often can't match the parent to the child so that I, I, so I leave that up to other educators. You know, it's okay to struggle with matching parents to their kids. And one way you could do that is to make sure everyone always puts on a name tag when they come into your classroom, their name and the name of their child, which is not something that is uh, unheard of um, and, and and it's really not problematic and it would save you a lot of stress and parents probably um, uh, wouldn't care. Christy, let's see. Oh, here's your comment. I'd love to know how to get rid of that interior monologue imposter syndrome that tells me I'm not good enough or that I can work as hard as I like. I'm still going to fail. Yes. So Christy, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry to have skipped that. That was an oversight. We all want to get rid of that monologue. What we need to do is learn how to talk back to it and to turn the volume down. Because the, 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 the goal of you know, having it evaporate suddenly one day is probably not super realistic. But if we can figure out some ways to talk back to it, to um, be able to counteract those negative statements, then I think you'll be in, better, in, in some better shape to take some risks and try something different. So we've now, I've now asked you five questions to start um, to think about your career. What grabs your attention? What keeps you focused and interested? 
what what brings you pleasure either in your free time or in your work time what have you enjoyed or found tolerable related to work in the past and if you had three wishes for yourself related to a profession what would those be and finally what negative messages do you tell yourself that thwart you before you even begin on this path once you have some answers it's time for you to reflect on your executive functioning strengths and challenges there are several work-related challenges for people with ADHD. First, time management related to the common ADHD issue of time blindness can be a real struggle. It can be tough to arrive to meetings or events promptly, to meet deadlines, and to correctly estimate how long something will take. Secondly, focus could be a stumbling block distractibility and being able to direct the spotlight of your attention to sustain concentration in a tedious or less than compelling task will affect your ability to complete things. And lastly, supervisors may want to see productivity and consistent performance. And when you struggle with impulse control, organization, or prioritizing, you're more apt to become easily overwhelmed and then procrastinate. It's harder to order the tasks in front of you and decide what's most important to accomplish. Getting the support you need to shore up your executive functioning challenges is a key step toward finding and sticking with a career that fits your ADHD brain. In fact, research has shown a link between job control, what you do and how you do it, and social supports as key factors for creating effective work environments for people with ADHD. So let's look at some of these comments here. Thank you so much. I love these comments. Um, <clears throat> Susan says, I tend to overwork and stuff out of fear of being wrong. Right, I'm not sure if you stuff um, because you're, you're, you're trying to stuff too much in because you, you don't want to make a mistake, but in general you overwork. Um, I know that sometimes I overwork and part of that is because I underestimate how long a task will take me and I overestimate uh, my capacity to do a lot of things and then I'm constantly feeling kind of overwhelmed and behind. Um, Christy, you're welcome. Uh, I'm doing so and sh I keep showing up and fighting against the self-sabotage and keeping the faith. That's so important, Christy, and it's important that you have a phrase or two that you can say to yourself when that self-sabotaging part starts to become very loud. Lara, part of my issue is that I get bored easily after I've learned the job. I see. So that's interesting, Lara. Um, I think that's actually somewhat common for people with ADHD and one of the things that would help is having a job that has new components that are part of it so you know for example with teaching you may have your lesson plan but each day will look different because the children are different or if you are um, working in a you know an emergency department or you are um, you're uh, an EMT you, the actual structure of what you do may be similar but each day is going to be different because the activity are different. Paula, I'm not that motivated by money at all. If you don't need to be motivated by money, that's wonderful. A lot of us are motivated or we need to be motivated by money to to be able to to you know pay the bills. Um, uh, so you know you have to figure out what the balance is between being a pay, being how much you need to earn to live and how much you need to earn um, uh, to um, that's satisfying for you. Amelia, salar stability, high salary, top grade uh, health insurance. Those are the things that are important to you. So having a st sub stability, having a solid salary and good health insurance. So that means the jobs that you're going to look for have those things. Um, it would be nice if they had things that you're interested in as well, but we don't know um, you know how that might happen but ideally we'd want to have some of these all, all, all of these components in whatever you're doing um, Cindy you got bumped out not sure what happened me neither um, three wishes wish I could focus as easily as in the past 
wish I had been diagnosed before the age of 50, wish organization would have supported my changes. So thank you, that's actually very moving, Sydney. Sydney um, I think that it is challenging as we get older that we fo our focus changes. Um, and if you were de recently diagnosed or diagnosed after the age of 50, um, thinking about um, medication as a supplement might be very useful, um, whether it's a stimulant or not, to assist you with focus. Um, when women go through a menopause, um, the role of, of um, estrogen, of course, uh, affects all kinds of neurotransmitters, but it affects our memory, it affects our ability to focus and stay motivated, and it can affect our mood too. So um, you, you know, might want to talk to your primary care provider about some options. Lara, I also have difficulty transitioning from one thing to another without any notice. Um, I think that when that happens for people, particularly at work, it's reasonable to say, um, I, um, I need a pause, hold on a second. I, um, give me a second to regroup and then I'll be on it. Um, if, if we don't ask for what we need, we're never going to get it. So we want to be able to be able to um, to uh, take some time if we if we if we that we need to make a successful transition, rather than feel like you know we're being pushed to do it right away. Even in crises, you can say, "Whoa, I need to slow things down a little bit." Bob says, "In the old days." Uh, people in certain jobs used to have secretaries and assistants. These days it seems like you have to be a CEO to have one. I always thought that would liberate me to focus on things I do well while being supported by someone with strengths I don't have. I happen to agree, Bob, and I feel like, you know, um, usually uh, in, in many corporate cultures there are administrators um, to, who help several people. Uh, it seems to me that you would need to be part of a team where there is an administrative assistant who can assist you um, in doing some of the things that you struggle with yourself. Cindy, also menopausal lady, auditory processing is not working in a noisy room with many children. Mm, I can understand that. It makes hearing instructions from other educators difficult. I can only hear one thing at a time, as long as I can see their lips moving, often saying, pardon, I still can't hear you. Well, you know, I think that's the best that you can do. You can only do what you can do. You know, you know if you're not hearing it, you're not hearing it, so it's reasonable to ask for a repeat. Okay, so let's look into the two categories of jobs um, that uh, we sort of that we see in the world, and those jobs are jobs with structure, uh, with or there's an external structure that's imposed on us. You have to get up, you have to go to a place, you show up for that, and you may show up online, but you're still showing up. And structured jobs um, include things like teaching, social work, being a chef or a food industry worker a hairdresser, nursing, emergency care, an EMT, or firefighter, police officer, computers or technology. Um, structure jobs can also be in the business world, managerial and accounting. Less, less structured jobs, which are the other category of jobs, generally include journalism, therapy, coaching, being a writer, a copywriter, or an editor, an artist, an actor, maybe a musician, or theater business positions, or running your own small business. The main difference is that structured jobs have clear roles, defined job tasks, and built-in routines. Unstructured jobs are more flexible. It's important that you consider which type of environment suits you best or fits well with your ADHD brain. Which type of lifestyle and res responsibilities would suit you? So I'd love it if you could put in the chat what kinds of jobs do you think best suit you? Structured jobs or less structured jobs? Um, working for someone else or working for yourself, and why? So structured, less structured, working for someone else or yourself, and why those um, seem to um, work best for you. So if you could put that in the chat, that would be great. Let's 
Cindy, hybrid, hybrid structure, independent work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I kind of like myself. You know, I have some things that are structured and some things that I create on my own. Um, and that um, I like that balance. I, I do find for me that having some unstructured time where I like set aside like three hours to work on an article or write something that I can sort of relax into it and enjoy having that spaciousness. And yet, you know, when I need to show up on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. for a day of clients, I'm there. So it is a challenge. Uh, let's see, I have a few others. Oh, Bonita says, early retirement, diagnosed last year at 59. New job requires eight hours of continuous divergent um, uh, th thinking. No room for problem solving or creativity. Computer screens are sensory difficult. Never felt so mentally fatigued and only work Monday, Tuesday with ADHD accommodations. Um, uh, uh, bilingual, I'm trying to build work as an interpreter for a flexible job I love to do. Good for you, Bonita. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Lara, <coughs> I need structure, at least to a certain degree. Doesn't have to be rigid, but I need some kind of structure. And that's good to know about yourself, <coughs> that you need to have that, that kind of frame to, to, you know, sort of maneuver in. Susan, my brain would enjoy less structure, but my ADHD also needs the structure to be successful. I know myself well enough to admit I need the structure. And that's a really important thing that you're saying, Susan, which is I know myself, I need the structure. I may not like it. I may wish I didn't have it, have to have it, but I know that I benefit from it. And knowing that you benefit from something um, and that it serves you is, you know, more than 50% of the way towards getting work that you find meaningful because you're actually operating in an area that makes sense for you. And Thea says a mixture of both. <clears throat> now, I'm curious, um, you may be thinking, um, how do I go from what I'm doing now to something that I would like to do uh, that, that, I, that would be more fulfilling? And beginning to explore professional avenues means exploring a network of folks for informational interviewing. And informational interviewing, talking with people who do work that seems appealing to you for 15 or 20 minutes about their career paths can be super helpful in getting a clearer picture about what someone does in their job and how they got to their position. Um, many of you um, might think, no way, I'm not talking to people I don't know. Um, many people with ADHD uh, experience social anxiety, which would make this step particularly difficult. That's why you need to take it slowly to do your research and engage in networking. You live in a community. You probably have some friends or family members who might have jobs um, that interest you, or they might know someone who, who is working in an area where you would like to work. Having them make an email introduction um, and so that you can um, maybe set up a 15 minute Zoom call um, to talk with them about their work and how they got there or just an email um, exchange is a nice way to get started knowing someone and hearing about their story. Sometimes when we hear about other people's stories and how they got to where they are, it can, it can offer us comfort, but it can offer, also offer us some inspiration about where we could go that might be useful for us. So when you've asked someone for a short informational meeting, create your questions in advance and write them down. Under stress, it's harder for folks with ADHD to recall information. So give yourself the supports you need. Of course, it's natural to feel nervous or uncomfortable. So practice your questions, maybe with a friend or a relative or a coach, um, somebody who cares about you. And this practice is essential to lowering your anxiety by increasing your familiarity with such conversations. So let's see, there's a few ideas here. Um, thank you uh, for posting that about um, jobs for creative and restless brains. 
Bob says structure is okay as long as it's not for its own sake. As long as I can reason, uh, I can understand and support the reasons for it. It can help. Cindy, oh, that's great. Good. Okay. So, um, what we want to do is to be able to have some conversations with people who are doing work that interests us, um, and and see uh, how they got there, what their journey was, because no, nobody really takes a straight line. I, I would have to say, I know you're thinking, well, some people did. Most people in their lives don't take a straight line. Very few people start a job at 23 and they're still in that job, you know, 45 years later. Some people do, but that have to love that job or they have to find that the job benefits them in some way. Um, most people uh, change jobs uh, a couple times in the course of their career or they create things that mean something more to them. So living with a now or a not now brain means that um, setting up these types of informational interview meetings can be tricky. It's, it, but it's essential to prepare for your meeting. So expect that you're gonna feel awkward and strategize how to manage that awkwardness in advance so you're not thrown off when those feelings arise. <clears throat> Talking with people who practice a variety of roles in a variety of different professions will assist you in understanding what's entailed in doing the actual work of a job. Plus, once you've done one informational interview, you'll be surprised at how much easier the others begin to feel. So um, I noticed that Cindy says she, that you've had four careers. I'm curious if anyone else who's here today could share if they've had more than one career in their professional lives. Uh, if so, what were some of them? Um, I, I think it's really helpful to understand the different careers that we have. You know, I feel very lucky as a psychologist because there's a lot of things under the umbrella of psychology that I'm able to do. Um, you may feel that way about teaching. You may feel that way about practicing um, uh, nursing um, or medicine. You know, so I've worked with a number of nurses in the course of my career and several of them have like re-specialized two or three times, changing their jobs into something else that they wanted to do because they had gotten bored with what they were doing. I'm curious, again, if anyone here uh, has changed their careers and if anyone here does um, any kind of informational interviewing when they're looking for uh, or thinking about changing their jobs. Paula says, I worked at a credit union for 23 years, but under that credit union, I had several different positions and kept my job alive. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Paula. So the umbrella was the credit union, but you moved around within that organization and did different things that kept you engaged and, um, and, um, and interested. Cindy, hospitality, remedial massage, printing industry, education. Anyone else have uh, several things that they've done in the course of their life, more than one job? Um, because I think it would be helpful for everybody to see that you're not alone if you have that. Erica, I'm a nurse, but can't seem to get into a hospital and have it work out. Hmm. I end up struggling with even getting through 90 day, the 90 day period. I've worked in banking, grocery, retail, and nursing is where I have a degree and a license, but I feel useless. That sounds really frustrating, Erica. I'm curious, when you say it doesn't work out, can you tell me a little bit about what happens? Uh, I'd love to brainstorm with you about this. Megan, waitress, genetic counselor, mom. Yes, so we're seeing people who are doing multiple things, um, not just one thing. So <clears throat> um, many times people who have changed jobs might feel like they aren't good at anything. They might lack confidence in their abilities. Um, they, they might feel like other people can figure this out, but somehow I can't. I would like to encourage you to zoom out and look at the bigger picture of your life. You've had successes and you've had some defeats. That's normal. 
everybody does, whether you have ADHD or not. While disappointments may sting, you likely have regrouped after these experiences in some way, overcome negative thinking, and forged ahead. And this resilience has facilitated your growth time and time again. This resilience is the kryptonite to that negative chatter running around your head that is telling you of the things that you can't do, can't do well, and the times that you fail. So let's see, I have some comments here, thank you. Uh, Erica, ADHD was diagnosed in college and I feel I haven't ever really learned things like I want to. Well, I'm curious, Erica, what would you like to learn? And what do you think is getting in the way of learning them? Paula, I've had several jobs over my lifetime. Railroad, banking, insurance, apartment management, office clerk. Thank you. I really think it's so important that we share the, all the various things that we've done so that we can dispel the myth that, you know, you find one thing and that's it for your life. Cindy, I feel mediocre at everything. Hmm, I want to give you a hug. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure there are things that you are not mediocre at. And I'd like you to take a minute and reflect on some things that you are good enough at. You don't have to be perfect. And in fact, you don't have to be good. Good enough. Because that's what's going to help turn the mediocrity around for you in your brain. Erica, I've worked as a healthcare excuse me, Eric, I've worked in clinics and was most effective there. I think that's your question. Right now, I live in a small town where the clinic environment was toxic. I'm so sorry to hear that. I seriously question if I should be a nurse and have done this several times. I'm wondering if there's a clinic in another town where that is less toxic than the one that you're working in, or if there's some way that you could do telemedicine that would be helpful. Um, where you're, help, where you're working with people, but you're not necessarily in a clinic. I know that here in, in my home state of Massachusetts, um, when you get COVID, you can, um, you make an appointment with a COVID team and you, I'm, you meet with a nurse or a doctor and you talk about your symptoms and it's actually like having a visit with a, a, a medical practitioner. Um, maybe there's something like that that would work for you. Erica, now I have a daughter who's five and just a mini me, so it's hard to actually focus when I'm barely managing myself. You know, when we have children who have ADHD and struggle in ways that we ourselves struggle with, it's painful. It's painful for us to watch them and it's painful that we can't help them with the thing that we ourselves are struggling with. What I would like to say to you is to embrace that struggle together. If you struggle with focus, and your daughter struggles with focus, okay, that's something that you could work on in your family. How can you do that? You can ask yourself, where is the spotlight of my attention? How do I improve focus? By noticing where it is and where it's not. So maybe you drift off, but you come back. What do you do when you come back from the drift? That's helpful or to start to notice where I am focused on something and why is that interesting to me. That will help build some metacognition, some self-awareness about focus that would be useful for both of you. It's common in families with ADHD for parents to work on a skill and kids to work on a skill. Sometimes those are the same skills and there's a um, you're working together and sometimes they're different skills but the practice of, of, of self-improvement is parallel and that is something that supports kids in their ability to be who they are and supports you in your ability as well. Anthea, I've worked as a healthcare assistant in a nursing home but did not enjoy it. When my kids started school, I went to university to study psychology and worked part-time as a teaching assistant. I was recently made redundant before Christmas as a program coordinator for a health company, which I loved as there was flexibility. I was in the office as in the community. 
So I think what you're saying is you were made redundant, which means you were laid off. And I'm very sorry to hear that, particularly because you love the job. I'm wondering if it might make sense to do some informational interviewing with people who are in similar companies or have similar positions so you could get your name out there and, and, and see if there's another uh, you know, parallel kind of job for you in the world. Cindy, there are some concepts or skills from each career that I have really struggled with so that I'm not excellent in any of them, but I may just be comparing myself to others. I think you are, Cindy, and you know there are some concepts in some careers that you've struggled with, but I bet there are some concepts in some careers that you've managed to do pretty well. And so I would encourage you to really start to pay attention to what is going well, what is working. Uh, we're, we tend to pay attention to what isn't working and that is harmful for us, both in terms of our mental health, but also in terms of our physical health. It's sort of sluggishness. So I wanna encourage you to think about um, right now, a concept or two from your career, <clears throat> one, some of those careers, that actually you were good enough at. Erica, I don't think I really re retained all the information I needed to know and didn't have people who really tried to work with me. Is this something you'd like to circle back to? Would you, would you wanna go back and try to get that information now? Um, there's a lot more support for alternative learners now than there might've been a while ago. Bonita, first, jobs, all as craftsmen, civil, mechanical, electrical, all by hand, loved it. Left to have flexible work for part-time volunteer work, started a cleaning business. Thank you, Bonita, for sharing. Erica, I actually did do remote work, but the job let me go before Thanksgiving. Hmm. I would love remote work again, but it's hard to know what is a scam or not. I hear you, and I think doing your due diligence about whether something's a scam um, is is what's called for, and certainly um, the attorney, you know, state attorney general, um, the Better Business Bureau. These are things that could help you with that. Paula, I am undiagnosed, 64 years old. I'd like to start an online business on how to teach people to declutter. Fantastic! It's the most helpful thing I've done in my home to help me think clearer. Paula, I support you 100% and I encourage you to Google people who do this and see if you can set up some kind of how did you set up your business meeting um, to get some advice or maybe take a basic coaching class. Um, Erica, sadly, I think my ADHD will finally be addressed because of my child, ironic. Ultimately, it is ironic, it happens a lot to people. Cindy, okay, peanut packers, singing telegrams, um, office cleaner, marketing, film and television, insurance, communications, PR and media relations, program facilitator. I was on uh, LTD for three years. In that time, I've been trying different medications, neuroliteracy based on CBT, biometric feedback, ADHD coaching, lifestyle changes, Etc. and nothing has helped improve my focus or ability to organize my thoughts or write quickly. I'm sorry to hear that. I wanna encourage you to keep trying to find a coach or a program that will help you. I'm sure there's something out there and I know Attitude has a lot of great resources for that. Again, I'm going to put down um, my free downloadable for today on motivation. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, Nicole says, I'm looking for work now. Uh, I, I was remote before and I feel like I don't have a schedule and my job search duties don't get done. So one of the things that's really helpful when you're looking for a job is to set up a schedule for yourself. And, um, and maybe it's a maximum of two hours a day, but you, you set aside nine to 10 and you decide what tasks you wanna do then. And then maybe um, you take a, ten, a five to 10 minute body break and then you set aside another hour and you do those tasks and then you go off and do your day and then come back maybe at four and see if we've gotten any responses but you have to have a structure when you're looking for a job otherwise it's not going to happen and it that when i say structure i mean a schedule i'm going to do this for the, for one hour and then i'm going to do this for a, a second hour 
or whatever your time limit is. Maybe your maximum is 30 minutes. That's fine. doesn't have to be an hour. Alicia, Alicia or Alicia, I'm an instructional designer and I found that the storytelling aspect of designing training is what I love the most. How could that be turned into a passion? I'm wondering if um, you actually might, you're an instructional designer, and I'm wondering if you might want to do some storytelling. Um, there are lots of options for people who uh, can tell stories in their communities. Um, and um, if you really like uh, the storytelling aspect of designing training, um, maybe you could um, uh, figure out how to um, do some improvisational theater, which is definitely storytelling. Um, Flora, I am AUD ADHD, AUD HD, and I get burned out after six to 12 months from each work because of ableist attitude of people in my workplace. I have neither the money nor or the spoons to reskill myself. What can I do? You know, I think Flora that um, ableist attitudes can be so um, de demoralizing and um and i and that maybe working for an organization that is uh, geared towards people who are on the spectrum or have adhd or have mental health issues um, might be uh, the best place because they will um, most likely be understanding of your situation and sometimes that can be true in certain educational environments as well um, so we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. Uh, Bonita says, recently discovered surface pattern designing. Creativity interests me, but the path to earn money seems questionable. Sometimes we have to take what um, we love, storytelling, and we use some of it in our work, and we use some of it in our non-work times, um, and, and that's how we feed ourselves. Um, so we're earning money and we're using some of this thing that we're interested in and then we're spending some free time doing more of, of that interest, which is not um, necessarily lucrative. Um, one thing that I'd like you to really think about is that I'd like you to start a wall of wonderful. So um, when I say a wall of wonderful, Get a, 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 um, a bulletin board or clear some space on your refrigerator. And I want you to put some post-its on up that are um, your board of brilliance. This is um, where um, you mark your successes, times when your things went well, not perfect, but good enough. And this attention to positive developments in your life will help you move forward in creating positive career experiences as well um, so that you're turning the volume down on the not good enough gremlins uh, the shame uh, about that and instead you're noticing and you're paying attention to and you're putting up on your bulletin board um, your unique strengths you may have experienced um, criticisms setbacks or failures um, which have fed this negative ju judgmental voice in your head you are not alone many neurodivergent people live with a similar voice in their heads and that holds them back too that voice is not who you are it's just unhelpful noise chattering to keep you insecure ashamed and in a one down position um, it's time to shift from thinking what you're bad at to what you're inexperienced at. You have not yet discovered how to apply your innate skills and yet is the operative word. So I want to go back to those five questions from the beginning to help you um, really structure how you're going to find career and work that feeds you. What grabs your attention? When do you stay focused? What brings you pleasure, either in your free time or in your work? What have you enjoyed or found tolerable related to work in the past? If you had three wishes for yourself related to a profession, what would those be? And lastly, what negative message 
messages do you tell yourself that thwart you before you even get started? Again, I want to encourage you to set up some informational interviews with people who are doing things in their lives, work or non-work, that you admire and think you might enjoy so you can learn more about it. Um, so I'm going to, I see a bunch of comments here, so I want to just address those. You're welcome, Sydney. I'm so glad. Wall of overwhelm versus wall of wonderful. Wall of wonderful. A board of brilliance. Things that you've done that are good enough. Dan Harris, who is, you know, the founder of 10% Happier, was in conversation with Sharon Salzberg. I was listening to this a few weeks ago. And he said to her, I've decided I'm not focused on what's good anymore or being good. And she said, well, what do you mean? And he said, because if I'm not good, then I'm bad. I don't want to be bad. And she asked, well, what are you focused on? And he said, being good enough. Because if I'm not good enough, then I can always get better. I love this. I love this attitude for you. And I love this attitude for all of us, particularly around career issues. If you're not good enough, then you haven't learned the skills, then you haven't found the thing that fits you. Keep digging.